Animation is a great way to bring your application to life and the possibilities are truly endless. Now in WPF, there's actually two ways to do animation and we're gonna cover both of these in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and meet the demo for this tutorial. And as we can see, we just have this little drop down menu right here that we can open and close. It happens immediately, but I'd like to animate this opening and closing. And then we have this little drop down button right here. And whenever we open and close, it rotates 180 degrees. I'd like to animate that as well. And then lastly, whenever we hover over these menu items in the drop down, the background changes immediately. But I'd like to animate that background color change as well. So we have three use cases here and we're gonna animate all three. Now, the first way to do animation in WPF and arguably the most common is with storyboards. So storyboards are done in XAML, which is nice because because that's where our UI is, so it's nice to have those hand in hand. So the first thing I wanna animate with a storyboard is gonna be the background color on these drop down menu items. So currently, all my drop down menu items are represented by this border, and inside the border we have a text block with the content for the drop down menu item. So we have a style applied to all of these borders, and that is right here. So whenever our mouse is over the border, we set the background to this darker gray color. Instead of saying it immediately, we are gonna use a storyboard. But when are we gonna start the storyboard? We're gonna start it whenever is mouse server becomes true. So it's gonna be an enter action for this trigger. We wanna begin a storyboard and we wanna define the storyboard that we wanna begin. So now we need to set some kind of animation up. So what are we animating? We're gonna be animating the background color. So we're gonna use a color animation. And there's all kinds of ways to configure this, but the most important thing we wanna specify is what we're actually animating in terms of the property. And we're gonna be animating the background. And we wanna animate that background to this db 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 hex, which is the dark gray value. So we can remove that setter down here. We can also specify a duration, about maybe 0.1 seconds, might have to play with that. So this is hours, minutes, and then seconds. So that seems pretty simple so far, but let's test it out. And we're gonna open this up and hover, and we get a crash. And that is because we're animating the background property, and we're animating that with a color animation. But background is actually of a type brush. So we need to dig into this background property, which is gonna be a brush, and that has its own color property, and that is what we wanna animate. So this should work, right? The background color, use a color animation, all good. Let's go ahead and try that out, and no, still not good. And the reason for that is because we need to make sure this background is a solid color brush. So we can do some magical casting here because if background is some kind of other brush, it won't actually have this color property. So we can prefix color with solid color brush and surround that with parentheses. And now this should work, right? So open up, hover over, and no, it still doesn't work. And the reason for that is because we're casting this to a solid color brush, but by default, it's just null. We don't set the background anywhere. So we can have a setter and just set the background by default to transparent. And now let's animate and see this in action. So there we go. And we did animate them turning into their hover state. But what about when we unhover? We definitely want to remove that and send it back to transparent. So we can have an exit action on our trigger. So let's just copy this and specify exit actions. So whenever is mouse server becomes false, no longer true, we're gonna animate back to transparent for the background. And now let's see this in action. So open up and there we go, it looks pretty good. Maybe that's a little bit too fast. Maybe like 0.2, you can play with these durations as much as you want. All right, I like it. So color animation is definitely great for visual feedback whenever you hover over something and buttons definitely a great thing to have in your toolkit let's move on to the next animation and i think the next one i want to tackle is this render transform which we use to rotate the drop down toggle button whenever the toggle button becomes checked so as you can see rotates around and we're going to stick to doing storyboards for this so i've already shown how we can use interactions to do some kind of storyboard whenever some kind of property becomes some kind of value. But now, what about if we wanted to start a storyboard on some kind of event? So in this case, maybe we could use an event trigger and the routed event we could listen for is the checked event on the checkbox. So now whenever our checkbox becomes checked, that's when we wanna rotate this by 180 degrees. And we wanna animate that, so we are gonna begin a storyboard. Let's set up a storyboard in here. And this time, we're gonna animate 
this angle. So we want it to go from 0 to 180 whenever we become checked. So to animate some kind of number, we're going to use a double animation and we're going to animate the rotation to 180 degrees. And same thing as before, we want to specify the target property. And in this case, it's going to be the render transform, which we have set as a rotate transform. And we want to animate the angle property so we can get the render transform angle. But as we saw before, angle is not on render transform, it's on rotate transform. So we have to do some casting again. So prefix the angle with rotate transform to ensure it is indeed a rotate transform that we're dealing with. And then for duration, maybe about 0.2 seconds. And then we can simply remove the old trigger that did everything immediately. And I was gonna demo this real quick, but we already know what's gonna happen. And that is we cast the render transform to a rotate transform so that we can get this angle property. But as we see, we don't actually set the render transform to a rotate transform by default. And then it'd be null and we'd cast it to a rotate transform and it just simply would not work. So we do have to set a default value for the render transform and set it as a rotate transform and the angle will just start at zero. And now I click my little toggle button and there we go, rotates around, but it doesn't rotate back and that is because we do not have an event trigger for when we uncheck the checkbox. So let's create one of those and this one is gonna be for unchecked. And for this, we're just gonna send the rotation back to zero. Here we go. Look at that, very fancy. So the last thing we're gonna animate is the drop down content. So currently, that is just toggling the visibility of the drop down. So if our drop down toggle button is not active, then it's gonna be collapsed. But if it is active, then it'll be visible. But that's not what we want. We want it to be animated. So in that case, what are we animating? Well, what we're gonna have to animate the height of the drop down over time. So the height is gonna be zero if the drop down is not active and then it's going to be whatever the height of our content is whenever the drop down is active and is open and for this scenario we're going to use our second approach to animation in wpf which is animating in code so with this technique we don't get the benefit of having our animation directly with our ui within the xaml but by being in the code we get a lot more flexibility and power because it's good old c sharp instead of xaml I mean, we could query some kind of database to figure out how long we want the animation to be before we start it in the code, but we're not gonna do that because that's like unnecessary. But anyways, we need a way for our code that we eventually write in our main window code behind to get called from some kind of action in the UI. So for that, we want our animation to start when our toggle button gets checked. So we're gonna create an event handler for the checked event on our checkbox. And we'll just rename this handler to open dropdown. So we're gonna be animating the height of our dropdown content, and that's a number. So we're gonna use a double animation. So we're gonna animate that height from zero to whatever size of our content. And we'll in fact call this the height animation and just instantiate a double animation. And let's look at this constructor. So the two value, we're not sure of yet. So we're just gonna hard code a 300 in there. And then the duration, we'll create a new duration inside of here, which takes in a time span. And we'll do maybe 0 0.5 seconds. Might be too fast, might be too slow. We'll figure it out. But anyways, we have our animation. Now we need to just apply it to our drop down content, which is just this border. So to do that, we first wanna give our border a name. We'll call it drop down content. And now in the code, we can take our drop down content and begin an animation. And what are we animating? We're gonna be animating the height property using our height animation. So just pass that in. So we open our drop down and we actually get an exception. And why is that? So for our double animation, we cannot use a default origin value of nan so nan is not a number literally and that is because by default our border has a height of auto and auto is pretty much equivalent to nan in fact it is equivalent to nan so by default we need to give our border a height that's actually a number so we can let's actually set that up in the code so by default we want our drop down content to be closed so we'll set the height to zero. So no longer nan, no longer not a number. And now we will open and there we go. So we definitely overestimated this 300. But before we get that all good, let's actually do the closing. So for that, we're gonna have a new event handler on our drop down toggle checkbox. 
and it's going to be fired whenever we uncheck it. So we want to close the drop down and let's go ahead and rename this handler to be close drop down because that's what we're doing. And actually same kind of animation. So let's just copy this, except this time we're sending the height of the drop down back to zero so that it'll appear as closed. And we can actually move our duration to some kind of variable just to reuse it. Uh, looks like IntelliSense doesn't want to let me move it to a field. So that's very helpful. So we're going to do it manually. Let's go ahead and just cut it out, move it to a field, the open close duration, and just paste in our desired duration and replace it everywhere. That's nice. Why not? So the last issue we have is specifying the dynamic to value for how big we want our drop down to grow to. And this is where the code approach to animations is super beneficial because we can just get that information very easily in code rather than in storyboards, I'm pretty sure it's near impossible. It's very hard. But anyways, what we want to do for this double animation is set the two value to the drop down contents, desired size, and we want the height that it desires. And let's see what that is. Let's put a breakpoint here and see that. So when we open, we see the desired height is actually zero, and that's because it's not visible and it actually is zero. So it thinks, okay, I should be zero. But what we need to do is actually tell the drop down content that it can be bigger than that. And to do that, we can call measure and tell it how much size it can grow to. And in this case, we can tell it, hey, you can be as big as you want. So for the size, we can pass in the drop down contents max width, which is going to be infinity by default, and the drop down contents max height. So using max width and max height rather than just directly using infinity is useful just in case we did want to cap the max height and width, we could just do it by specifying it here. And now if we see what the desired height is, we will see that it is still zero. And I believe the reason for that is actually we should be measuring this inner content. So we'll call this the drop down inner content. And we're gonna have to use this because we are indeed telling this border that its height should be zero through this animation. So we will have to dig into the inner content. So this inner content is not going to be influenced by this height that we set on the outside border whenever we call measure. And now let's see this and we should get what we want. So yeah, as we can see, the height is 143.84. That seems pretty reasonable. And let's see that. All right, so it did open. Let's see it animated because we were debugging. And there we go, pretty clean. And that's a pretty good animation speed. But the close was indeed immediate. And why was that? Are we actually hitting this? What's going on there? And oh, actually, I know what's up. And the reason it was immediate is because we still have this visibility binding and we don't want that anymore. We want the animation to occur instead of that instant visibility change. So now we open and we close. So we've addressed our three animation use cases. We've gone over the two ways to animate in WPF through storyboards and through code. Now I want to address some other animation concepts. So the first thing you might be wondering is why do I never specify the from value for the animation? Well, let's see what would happen if we did that. So I'm going to set the from value to zero, which makes sense because we want to animate from the drop down being closed. So zero height to the maximum height that we want to grow to. And let's see how that looks. So we open looks pretty good, but then we close and then I open while we're still closing. And as you can see, since we set the from value to zero, if we open while we're still closing, the animation is going to start from zero because that's what we tell it to do. And that's not what we want. We want the animation to just start from whatever value rather than just snapping back to the beginning. At least in this case, there might be some scenarios where you would want it to start from zero or from some initial value. But for all of our use cases here, we did just want the from value to be whatever value we were currently at. Some other interesting functionality, we can set delays on when our animations start. So for this, we can use a begin time. Let's say this is for the rotation of the checkbox. Let's say we don't want to start that until we are fully open. So after that 0.5 second animation to open our drop down, then we will do the rotation. Let's do that for the unrotation as well and open. So there we go, we get a delayed animation that could be useful. Maybe not in that scenario. I usually like to give immediate feedback. I'm probably not going to go into everything, 
but there's some other cool things such as auto reverse so if you want something to automatically get undone after the animation let's see that so we open and then it just immediately goes back to its unrotated state we also have repeat behavior so you can make it automatically repeat i believe there's all kinds of values for this let's see so you can repeat forever or you can pass in the amount of times you want to repeat so like two or three times and then we have acceleration ratio that might be a cool one to show off for the drop down opening and i should also mention that all of these can be applied in storyboards and in the code approach so for this double animation maybe we want the acceleration ratio and this is the percentage of the animation that is spent accelerating so it's a value between zero and one by default it's zero so in that case it wouldn't really accelerate at all but maybe we make something like 0 0.75 so 75 percent of the animation will be spent accelerating and maybe we can see that so we open and it's so hard to see but basically it starts off kind of slow and then just accelerate so you can play around with that for however you wish your application to behave but overall animation two approaches so storyboards great to integrate into your xaml and keep your ui in one place but for complex use cases sometimes you might have to move it into the code behind so that you can easily use some kind of c sharp code so that you can quickly satisfy your animation desires so hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own application to bring it to life if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.